The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to SuperCoder's February GetWise webinar, Making the Most of SuperCoder's EM Resources. Thank you for attending. I'm Lisa Israel and I'm going to be your facilitator for today's session. Uh, I am an EM coder and an auditor who actually specializes in EM. I'm also the director of SuperCoder, and so I'm really excited to show you our SuperCoder EM tools today. Uh, I've been, as a coder and an auditor, I've been on both sides of EM coding, uh, trying to both assign a proper level of service and therefore a code, and then also educating folks on proper leveling, documentation improvement, et cetera. And so I'm really excited to be able to show you how SuperCoder can help you and the resources that we have within SuperCoder that will help things be easier for you and make you more productive and efficient and help you if you are in a role of educating others as well. Uh, for some of you, I know this is going to be some great first introductory information, and you'll be able to see SuperCoder perhaps for the first time and see how some of these tools will be helpful for you in your EM coding and billing. And then others of you are probably existing SuperCoder customers, and I'm hoping that this is going to be a little bit of a refresher and that maybe I'll be able to show you some new tricks that will help you use your SuperCoder tools even more efficiently than you already do. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, say a few things before we begin, just a few housekeeping items that I want to mention. Uh, I'm going to try to not take up too much of your time today, and this webinar will be between 30 and 45 minutes, so you guys can get back to your uh, daily work. I know that time is precious. Um, I do want to mention that attendees are in listen-only mode. That is really to just make sure that we don't have too much background noise and everybody can hear the presentation. Uh, but what that means is that you can hear me, but I can't hear you. Uh, but you will be able to ask questions. There is a function in GoToWebinar in your admin panel for GoToWebinar. It should be probably on the right-hand side of your screen. There is a questions function. So you can go in there and ask questions if you would like to do that. You're welcome to add those questions at any point during the presentation. I will check at the end of the presentation to see if we have any questions in there and we'll answer what I can. If you don't get a chance to ask your question during the session, if we run out of time, or if you're just not comfortable um, asking a question during the session, don't worry. Um, there will be a way for you to reach out to me after the session. You can certainly do that. And if we have too many questions at the end and I'm not able to get through them all in that 45 minutes or less that I promised you, I will certainly reach out to you and connect with you individually as well. Uh, I also want to mention that there are no CEUs available for this webinar. This is meant to be just a, a demonstration and a showing you of the SuperCoder tools, but I'm going to show you some ways um, that you can actually use SuperCoder to earn CEUs as well. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and look at our agenda for this session. Uh, we're going to talk very briefly, because I'm sure most of you all know already, that uh, correct EM coding is important, and we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend most of our time showing you the EM tools within the SuperCoder product. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get to code data the official EM guidelines. I'm also going to take you through and show you a couple of resources that are created specifically uh, by the Coding Institute um, and our coding experts on staff, uh, our EM survival guide and our EM coding alert monthly newsletter. And then most of the demonstration I'm actually going to spend on our EM calculator. This is a free tool that um, comes with all SuperCoder subscriptions and you actually can access this calculator um, without a SuperCoder subscription as well. So it's it's pretty exciting. We just launched this in December, and uh, it's a great tool, and I think you'll find it very valuable. So I'm going to show you that, and that's probably where we're going to spend most of our time today. So very quickly, because as I said, I'm sure most of you on this call, if not all of you, already are aware that EM coding is, of course, important. Um, it is one of the also one of the most confusing and challenging areas of coding, and as we all know, it's a very uh, hot spot for payers audits, uh, not just CMS but payers across the board. Um, so we want to make sure that we're doing exactly what we should be doing in EM coding. Um, I have 
some information here on this slide from the most recent CERT report, and that's the 2018 CERT report. It just came out toward the end of last year. And in that CERT report, uh, it indicated that EM services accounted for 11.9% of the coding error rates uh, for 2018, and that resulted in 3.8 billion dollars in, in improper payments. So you have to assume from that that, of course, the EM coding is going to be under significant scrutiny by CMS and also private payers as well. So we want to make sure that we are um, audit ready and that we are going ahead and um, doing the best EM coding that we can. So um, we're going to show that um, we're going to show that and how SuperCoder can help you with those as well. Now um, I just want to mention a lot of folks that I've dealt with over the years, especially as an auditor, think that if a practice tries to stay under the radar um, by either undercoding or, or what I call middle of the road coding, that that actually uh, is is good and will keep you. I'm sorry. I just noticed that folks are not able to see my screen. I apologize for that. Uh, hopefully you can see that now. I think I just fixed that, so hopefully that's okay. Thank you to those of you who raised that that point. Um, you should be able to see my slides now. I've only shown a couple. Um, real quick slides uh, so you didn't miss much with, with not being able to see that. Um, going back to the, the point about undercoding is just as bad as overcoding, uh, I've had a lot of practices let me know that they think that um, kind of staying middle of the road, reporting those 99213s for example, those middle of the road codes will actually help keep them off the audit radar, but that's that's not really true. Um, downcoding your your claims is, is just as bad and puts you as, at a higher risk for uh, auditing as um, as overcoding does. So it's important to know that you are reporting the proper EM codes regardless of what those codes are. Um, your documentation needs to be reflected in your code choice. Of course, that is proper coding. Uh, the other thing is if you're downcoding, you're probably leaving massive amounts of money on the table um, over the course of one year. As an example, um, if your physician documents what would actually be a 99204, so a level four new patient visit, but you follow this middle of the road policy and you report a 99203, you've probably forfeited just under $60 for that that visit, depending obviously on your, your payer and your reimbursement rate um, and your location and how that all factors into your reimbursement. But let's say an average of $60 per visit if you do this twice a day over the course of a year, you've lost $25,000 for that year. So that's that's a pretty big deal. And when we're in the the situation we're in now with the healthcare where every dollar really matters to your bottom line, it's really important that you are not leaving deserved money on the table. Um, and you also would be um, setting yourself up for some um, some payment adjustments most likely or at least some red flags if you were audited because the documentation would support a higher level of coding um, and you're not actually reporting the appropriate code. So I just wanted to mention all that so that we understand going into this why EM coding is so important and because it is such a complicated and confusing area, especially when we're determining the proper EM code levels, any resource that you can use to help you with that is going to be a great thing. And the good news is SuperCoder can do that. We can help. And so I want to go ahead and I'm actually going to switch over to SuperCoder right now. I'm going to switch my screen and actually go to the SuperCoder homepage. And we're going to go ahead and dive into some of these tools that I've talked about. So on my screen now, what you see is the SuperCoder homepage. You would access this by going to www.supercoder.com and then you would log in with your username and password which you receive when you sign up for a SuperCoder subscription. I do want to note that your homepage may look a little bit different than mine um, here in this middle part especially because within SuperCoder we allow users to customize what their home page looks like. You can actually move these boxes around. You can select which ones appear on your home page and which ones um, do not. So your home page may look a little bit different here in the middle than mine does. 
Of course, there's a lot I could show you within SuperCoder. We could spend all day on a full product demo and I could show you uh, how to customize and all that. But our focus today is the EM tools. And so I'm not going to show you that today. But if you would like to see some of those um, options of how we customize and all of that uh, or any of our other tools, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me after the session and I would be happy to do a, a more comprehensive demo or a more, more focused demo for you on some other things you might be interested in doing. Now we're going to go back to EM uh, for right now. The first thing that I want to show you is how to actually get to any code. Uh, this is not just for EM codes, but um, certainly EM codes are included. I'm going to show you uh, an EM code and we're going to see all of the information that SuperCoder has about a particular EM code. Now there's a couple ways you can get to this information. I'm going to show you real quick first. If I just type a code here in my search box, I'm going to go with the 99213, one of those middle of the road codes I was just talking about. I'm going to type that in. I'm going to hit enter. And that brings me to what we call our code details page. Now on our code details page, you have all the information about the code. You have some symbols here of, that are applicable to this particular code. You have the official CPT code descriptor. You have a section here called lay terms, and this is data that is written by the TCI experts, the SuperCoder experts. It's all information that is helpful for you in understanding these codes, um, and again, Every code, not just EM codes, uh, every code in CPT, uh, some of the ICD-10-CM and then HixPix as well have this lay term information also. We're always adding to that as well. Uh, lots of other information here. We have everything from the official CPT guidelines to historical and upcoming information, any changes that have been made to a code over the years by the AMA that's listed here so you can see the history of a particular code. Down below we have lots of additional information, lots of crosswalks, um, modifier crosswalks, uh, diagnosis to procedure crosswalks, etc. Below that we're going to have some additional information uh, Fee schedules, so this is the one that's showing right now on the screen is the Medicare Physician Fee Schedule. We do have the OPPS fee schedule as well. We also have CCI edits checkers here, so you can check which codes are bundled with a particular code. Uh, we have that for OPPS, Medicare, and Medicaid. If you report to Medicaid, we have CCI edit checker for Medicaid. We also have LCD lookup here so that you can access any LCD information that's been published about a particular code. Down below we have related articles information. This includes CPT assistant articles if you have that add-on, as well as CMS, anything Medicare, uh, and Medicaid have put out about a particular code. And then coding alerts and survival guides, we're going to talk about those in a little bit. Uh, those are actually the TCI information um, that that we produce, and so you have access to that as well. You do have a place to put personal notes here. You can see that I just added a test note here that would show up. Uh, but this is what a code details page looks like. Again, not just for EM codes, but also for any other code as well. So I accessed this page by going and typing a code in the search bar here. You can also use the left-hand navigation bar to drill down to a code. You would do the same thing here. So EM codes are going to be in this 99,000 range. You just continue to click until you get to the code that you're looking for. So there are multiple ways to get to any information within um, within SuperCoder. This takes us to what we call the listings page, which shows all of the codes in this range. I would just click on details here, and that would get me to the code details page that I was showing you before. So again, this is not specific just to EM codes, but I did want to show you how you would access that information uh, if you needed to, to actually just get specific code data. I'm going to go back to my home page. I'm going to click right here on the TCI SuperCoder logo. That's going to take me back to my home page. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how to get to guideline information. Now, within SuperCoder, we don't just have the code level data, but we have additional data that you might need as well. If you're working with EM codes, you need to access the official EM guidelines. 
which include not only the CPT guidelines that if you were working in your manual, you would see those um, in, in the front of the EM codes, right before the EM codes, but then we also have the 1995 and 1997 official EM guidelines from CMS, because if you're an EM coder or auditor, you know that um, you're allowed to work under either the 1995 or 1997 guidelines. So I want to show you that first, you can access the official CPT guidelines from the AMA by going under CPT, much like we did with the code, clicking on guidelines and then right here our first option is EM guidelines so I'm going to click on that and show you this information now these are the same guidelines like I said that you're going to find in your CPT manual I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so that you can see some of this we're not going to spend too much time here but I wanted to show you it even includes the flow chart that you would see printed in your CPT manual as well so this is great because you don't have to haul those heavy books around everywhere with you you can just refer to your SuperCoder subscription to get all of that information it's right here uh, within SuperCoder I'm going to click again to go back to my home page and now I'm going to show you how to get to the 1995 and 1997 guidelines with the SuperCoder. You're going to go under Publications and then Government because it's produced by CMS. So, of course, it's a government publication. You can see here in our, our Resource Center uh, for Government um, Resources that we have lots of information here. So, uh, private payer information, OIG, Medicaid, Federal Register. If you're looking for the Federal Register report when it comes out uh, every year, you can access that within SuperCoder. But again, we're here to look at evaluation and management. Here's our EM guidelines. We're going to click on that. And within the middle of our screen, we can see here all of the different EM resources that we have within SuperCoder. Now, this here is a frequently asked questions that's put out by CMS and then here the second and third options are the 1995 and 1997 guidelines we also include the EM services guides as well these are all PDF format so you would just click on download open the PDF and I'll just expand this so you can see it this is the official 1995 documentation guidelines for evaluation and management services. So you have this all handy right here within SuperCoder. You can save this PDF uh, to your computer uh, or you can just look something up and, um, and then close out of it. So that is the, the guideline information that I wanted to show you. Now I want to go back to my home page and I want to show you some of the TCI created uh, information that you can get within SuperCoder as well. We all know that continuing education is an important component of, of any healthcare professional's job and we want to give you the resources to help you keep learning, to help you educate others, and then to also continue to get the guidance and coding advice that you need to do your job and to keep up with changes in regulations, in codes, um, and uh, and also the opportunity, like I mentioned earlier, to earn some CEUs as well, because a lot of us need those. So the first resource I'm going to show you for those things is the TCI Survival Guides. Again, we're going to go under Publications. We're going to go to Survival Guides. And you can see here that we have several different specialties. I'm going to click on the EM Survival Guide. These guides are chocked full of how-to coding information uh, written by our TCI coding experts, certified coders, um, and you're going to be able to click by chapter. You can see each chapter. I'm just going to open up one of them so you can take a quick look at it. But this is chapter one of the EM Survival Guide. It's going to give you information about those guidelines we just looked at. So lots of continuing education information here as well. I'm going to go back a page because I want to show you this little purple button here, Take Quiz. For each survival guide that you have as part of your SuperCoder package, you can take a quiz after you've read the survival guide and you can earn CEU credit for that. Here's the quiz. You would fill out your answers 
it's a 10 question multiple choice quiz and then you would submit it and it will tell you whether you've passed or failed based on your answers of course and give you your CEU credit that you can put into your AAPC um, CEU tracker to get that credit after you pass that quiz. The other resource that I want to show you, I could go back to the home page, but I, I'm just going to access it from here, is the EM Coding Alert newsletter. So we're going to go Publications, Coding and Healthcare Newsletters, and then I sh under my account, I have access to all of the newsletters. Depending on your SuperCoder package, you will have access to some um, of these, uh, depending on what you choose. I'm going to click on EM Coding Alert. Now if you're familiar with the Coding Alert newsletters, you know that they're mostly monthly publications. We do have um, one weekly and one bi-monthly publication, but most of the publications are monthly. The coding publications are very focused on timely uh, how-to coding guidelines. Again, like I said before, they are written by our certified coding experts. Uh, and the goal is to help you continue to learn more to get very practical coding advice to help you continue your education and keep up on the latest news. So for example, in the EM coding alert, uh, toward the end of last year when we were all waiting to see what was going to happen with the EM codes and whether there were going to be changes to those EM codes and the reimbursement rates that CMS had proposed, um, that coverage was all within the EM coding alert. So you were able to know the latest news uh, as soon as the Federal Register came out and said that they were not moving forward with the proposed changes, the EM Coding Alert reported on that. And we will continue to report on that information as 2020 approaches and some of those um, changes are going to be starting to go into effect. That's all going to be covered in the EM Coding Alert. So these newsletters are invaluable as far as continuing your education and making sure that you're keeping up with the latest changes. Now. This is what our newsletter pages look like. This is the most current issue of the EM Coding Alert. You can click on the links to read articles individually and it will take you right to the article page. You can download those articles in PDF format if you'd like to do that and print it out so you can read it later. You can very easily toggle to the other articles within this issue of the newsletter. Or if you prefer, rather than clicking on each individual link, you can also open up a PDF of the full issue. I'm just going to show you that very quickly. If you do opt to get a print version of the newsletter, this is what it would look like. You would get that in the mail um, and you would get a print version of the newsletter um, that looks very much like this, just in paper format. I'm going to close out of that and go back, you'll see here that when you have access to a newsletter, you also have access to all of the archives of this newsletter. So you can go back as far as the newsletter has been produced. So here's, for example, some 2017 information if you needed to do some research. Uh, you also can do keyword or code searches within the newsletters and bring up articles that have been written about a particular code or a particular keyword that you're searching on. I'm going to go back to 2019 to also show you we talked about how CEUs are important. Each newsletter includes another quiz just like I showed you with the survival guides where you can take the quiz after you read the uh, publication and the questions all relate to the articles that are in the issue and then you would pass the quiz and you would get CEU credit for that as well. So it's half a CEU per issue, so you can earn for an annual subscription to our news, our EM Coding Alert newsletter, you can earn six CEUs in the year um, for EM or for your regular, your CPC or your CEMC as well. So that is our um, newsletter, the EM Coding Alert, that is available as part of SuperCoder packages. Or if you are interested in adding on, perhaps you have a SuperCoder subscription with a different newsletter, you can also add on additional newsletters, or you can get just a print or electronic newsletter subscription as well. Now I'm going to go back. I told you at the beginning of the session that I was going to spend most of our time on our EM calculator. 
Uh, so this is, uh, I'm excited to show you this. I think this is a great tool. Uh, as I said, that we launched this in December. So it's still fairly new. I'm, I'm very excited about it still. It is a free add-on to all Supercoder subscriptions. So it doesn't matter what level of package you get. You get the EM calculator. And it is actually available for free uh, to non-customers as well. Um, if you are a customer and you are logged into Supercoder, you're going to go back to the left navigation bar on your home page, and it's the very last item. We just click on EM Calculator, and it's going to take us to this level of service calculator. Now, I'm going to show you how to use it, uh, but there's more to this than what I could really show you in a... Um, in a, you know, a few minutes here in our session. And I would love for you to be able to come in and take a trial subscription of Supercoder or just do a trial of our EM calculator. Uh, you can go to our homepage and just click on the EM calculator. You fill out a little bit of information, your name um, and that kind of thing, your email address, and then you can tr play with the EM calculator. I would love to have you come in and try it out for yourself because I think that's the best way to really see um, the functionality of this tool. We don't all need to do the same things every day and we don't all use tools in the same way. So I don't want to um, limit your experience by just what I'm showing you today. So please do uh, take some time to come in and take a look at this tool yourself. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through an example of how to use it, show you a few highlights of the tool, and then, um, like I said, hopefully you'll come in and try it yourself and get to see some other additional features as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just walk you through an example as if I were a coder who had some documentation in front of me of an EM service. Um, first thing it's going to ask us, you can see here it's, it's a very intuitive calculator. It tells me exactly what information I need to enter. So of course the very first thing that it needs to know to help me get to a level of service is what type of service is this. You can see here all of the different EM services are in here. Okay, so no matter what type of EM service you are, um, your providers are performing and you're having to code for, you can use this calculator. Uh, I'm going to show you in just a minute how we how we work with time-based EM coding in this calculator. But first, I'm just going to walk you through, um, let's just say it's an office visit. The patient came in, and I have documentation from the provider of an office visit. Type of visit, let's say this, this is an established patient. I'm just going to pick a date of service. We're just going to say it was the 19th. I'm going to click Save to save this information. Now, it's just saving it into the calculator. It's not saving it to my computer. It's not saving it to the Supercoder servers. It's just saving it into this instance of the calculator. So where it takes me next is to history, the first key component of an EM service for an established patient. We have the ability to enter things in different ways depending on the type of um, documentation you have, whether you're using 95 or 1997 guidelines. We do have this history unobtainable box, and you'll see if wherever you see a little um, eye icon like this, you can click on it and we'll give you some information about what this is. So here's the, the caveat rule to history unobtainable. If a doctor, a provider is not able to obtain history from a patient, perhaps the patient is unconscious. Uh, this is uh, common in like emergency room encounters. You can click this history unobtainable and just like if you were coding on your own, it will give you the full credit for the history unobtainable. Um, there is also information, you'll see these little CMS blue dots. Again, if you click on those, it gives you additional information. So this explains the definition of a chief complaint. DG is documentation guideline. The medical record should clearly reflect the chief complaint. So this is great if you need to do any education. If you have a new coder, perhaps, this is a great way to walk them through how to code an EM encounter and help them understand the different components of that encounter. So I'm just going to go ahead and click some information here. I'm going to say that we're counting the number of elements. I'm just going to click a few boxes. Obviously, if I were really doing this, I would be taking these from the documentation that I have. Review of services, I'm going to just click a few boxes again and say that the doctor um, did these things. You have the ability to 
check a box that's 10 point review of systems was negative or if the doctor has the statement of all other systems negative you can also check that box as well um, and that gives you some additional information or, or adds to your um, your calculations I should say uh, past medical family social history again I'm just going to go ahead and, and check some boxes medications and allergies are pretty common and we're going to say we also checked uh, the patient is not a smoker um, down at the bottom based on my calculations and the things that I have clicked it gives me what my level of history is for this encounter so I have an expanded problem focused history for this encounter I'm going to click save it's going to save into the calculator and it moves me to the exam portion again I'm going to do this based on the documentation that I have you have the ability to choose 1995 I'm going to click on that and show you what that looks like under 1995 we know that different payers count things differently so you have the ability to select the format of the payer that you are reporting to and it will calculate your level of service based on that payers formatting so 95 examination organ systems and body areas that's how we count exam in 1995 notice we have some additional information here we always try to provide you as much information as possible so that you have all of the things that you need to understand what you should be selecting and to do education again if you need to do that also I want to note that if you hover over any of these we give abbreviations of commonly used terms in these body areas or um, organ systems so that you have information that helps you if you see in the documentation something like um, no thyromegaly where is that going to fit well if you hover over this you can see perhaps the provider documented it with the zero or the O with the slash through it that would count as neck so we're also trying to help with documentation and translating that provider documentation into this calculator for your level of service I'm going to show you 1997 as well again we have the CMS information you can click and get some information uh, that is actually official documentation from CMS we have the ability to do the general multi-system exam or if you're in a specialty um, and you use a specialty specific exam you can choose those as well so those are all listed here I'm going to go back to the multi-system and I'm going to use that to calculate my exam for the example so I'm going to just assume that I have documentation here I'm going to click through what the provider documented again we have a little eye here so let's see what this says about vitals this is important a minimum of three vitals have to be documented to count this bullet so that's important we need to know that if we only have two this isn't going to count toward our exam so let's say we took height weight and sitting blood pressure for this patient general appearance the provider did a quick exam of the pupils and iris did a quick look in the ears um, listen to the lungs listen to the heart let's see we're just going to click a few boxes here and then examined the abdomen general maybe the patient just came in with some general symptoms so you can see here there's all of the information for all of the um, 1997 general multi-system uh, boxes here that you can check and let's just add orientation now down at the bottom here it tells me my final level of exam for this encounter is EPF expanded problem focused so we have we can see our path here right now we're at a 99213 because we have an EPF history EPF physical exam as well I'm going to click Save and it's going to take me to medical decision making now again this mirrors the guidelines I have to put in here to calculate let's say this was a new problem for this patient but the provider did not order any additional workup so no labs no follow-up visits no radiology nothing like that so we have one new problem no workup so provider did not do any ordering or reviewing of tests so I'm going to go ahead and skip the amount or complexity of data section now let's say um, for the risk I have um, one acute illness but it's uncomplicated and let's say that the provider 
prescribed a medication at the end of the encounter. You can see here that moves my risk up to moderate. And if we scroll down, our final level of medical decision making is moderate complexity. And that's noted down here at the bottom as we follow our path. If we click save, that's going to take us to our final code level. This shows us exactly the level of history, level of exam, medical decision making. It tells us whether we use the 1995 or 1997 guidelines, and it gives us our final code. So for this encounter, we should be reporting a 99213. Now, if you are a SuperCoder subscriber and you are logged in, Right from here, you can click on the code and it will open a new tab that will take you to the code details page for that code. If you are not logged in and not a subscriber and you're using this calculator, you will not see the official descriptor and you won't be able to access that information. But if you are using this while logged in, you have full access to then jump right to the code and get all the information about that code. I also want to show you, you can click this download PDF button down here at the bottom and open a PDF or save it to your computer. I'm just going to open it to show you. And this will actually give you a PDF of this encounter. So if you're doing um, provider education, for example, as an auditor, I could print this out and put it with the chart and say, you know, this is how I got to the code. You know, these are the things that you noted in your documentation and that I was able to add together to get to a 99213 code. Uh, so that's very valuable. Now I do want to note that this is strictly a calculator. It is not an auditing program. It does not save any information. You can't save these. Um, there's no PHI entered, so you wouldn't be able to um, put in patient information or medical record number or anything like that. But that also means it's completely secure. There's no PHI information. There's no concerns about HIPAA. Um, the information is not saved in our system at all. Uh, and it, it is not, other than the PDF that you can print out, there's no uh, saving to your own system either. So it is strictly a calculator, but that downloadable PDF really is very helpful when you're doing any sort of education, or if you just want a record of, you know, how are you getting to a code? You have that ability to print that out or save those PDFs. Now, I told you at the beginning that I was going to show you about time-based coding, and I also want to show you about uh, critical care coding as well. One thing I want to note before we jump over real quick, though, I didn't, with the example that I did here, I did not show it, um, but if you enter information under both 1995 and 1997 exam guidelines, what will happen is when you get to this final code level page, it will pop up a box that tells you um, if you code under 1997 guidelines, for example, the level of exam will be higher and it will give you the option. Do you want to stick with 1997 or do you want to use 1995? That's a really great way, um, especially for new coders, because a lot of times it's hard to know unless your practice or your facility has a policy of we always use 95 or we always use 97. Sometimes it's hard to know which one is more beneficial uh, based on the documentation, and often it varies based on provider and how they document. So that's a really helpful tip. It will help to train coders um, as to which one works better for a particular provider, gives the provider the most credit for the documentation that they are producing. Now it's not telling you to upcode, it's not telling you to document more so that you can code higher. What it's doing is taking the documentation you have and translating it into the best reimbursement and best coding for that provider. So I think that's really important to know. Um, I'm going to click here, start new code calculation. That's going to take me back to my first screen. It's wiped out all the information that I had in there before. I want to show you time-based coding. If we choose time-based coding here, it's going to be a little bit different. We still need to put in place of service. We'll just pick a date. And we're going to click save. Now it's not going to take us to history exam or medical decision making because of course when you code based on time, those don't matter. What it is going to ask is it's going to ask me what type of service it is. Let's go ahead and just do outpatient again. We'll say it's a new patient this time. And then it's going to ask me those three key questions for time-based coding. And if you click here on this I, it's going to tell you 
the rules for time-based coding. So counseling and coordination of care has to be more than 50% of the encounter. What you have to answer are these three questions. Does the documentation have the total time? Yes. Does the documentation say that more than half the time was spent on counseling and coordination of care? Yes. Does the documentation describe the content? So what was the subject? What did you have counseling and coordination of care about? Let's just click no and see what happens. It gives me this warning that says the status, this does not satisfy the criteria for time-based coding, and it's going to take us, if I were to click either go to history or if I um, were to go back and start over, it's going to take us through the history exam and medical decision making because I don't meet the criteria for time-based coding, I have to go with my key components. But let's go back and click yes, we have all of that information. So now we need to enter our total face-to-face -face time. So let's say 45 minutes, here's our code level. 99204. We click save and it's going to take us right back to that final code level page, gives us access to the code and our downloadable PDF again. The other one that I want to show you, I'm going to do a new code calculation real quick. The other one that's a little bit different is critical care. If you're coding for critical care, let me find it here in our list. Oh, I must have scrolled past it. Where is it? There it is. I'm right on it. Critical care services. Type of visit is based on the time of treatment. It doesn't matter where it was or whether the patient was new or established. We'll pick a date of service again. Now it's going to take us to this critical care tab rather than the history exam and medical decision making. Gives us all of the information about what critical care services are. All we need to enter here is the total time of critical care. I'm going to enter a really crazy number. Let's say the provider spent two hours on critical care. That's a lot, but let's, I want to show you the results here. What I wanted to show you is it's going to pop up 99291, so that's our first, but then because of the time we've entered, we also would enter two instances of the add-on code 99292. We'll click save again, and it will take us to that final code page. It explains both of the codes, and you would have that downloadable PDF once again. So as I mentioned, this calculator, there's a lot more to it. It's great if you can come in here and play around with it a little bit and try it out for yourself. I hope you'll be able to do that. Uh, it is part of all SuperCoder packages, as I mentioned, and you can access it even if you are a non-customer right now. So you can either take a free trial of SuperCoder or you can come to our website and just sign up for the calculator to try that out for yourself. So that's about it uh, for our time. We're getting close to the end of our time here. And it is, um, I do want to jump back to my, my presentation here for a minute in the PowerPoint. Again, I'd really like to encourage you to take a free trial of SuperCoder if you've never used it before. If you are a current user of SuperCoder, I'm hopeful that I was able to show you something new that maybe you didn't realize you had access to and that you'll explore those tools to increase your productivity and make your job a little bit easier as well. If you are new to SuperCoder, I have this slide up here, Why SuperCoder? I just want to highlight a few points for you to keep in mind when you're thinking about our presentation and what I showed you today. SuperCoder is built by coders, billers, auditors, other healthcare professionals like myself and everybody on my team is a healthcare professional in some way. Um, it is built by us for coders, billers, and healthcare professionals like you. Um, it is a comprehensive suite of medical coding resources and expert guidance. I showed you just a small portion of that information today. And I think um, if you were able to go in and do a trial subscription, if you're new to SuperCoder, you'll be able to see the breadth and depth of tools and data that we have available to you. It's all very easy to access and web-based, so you have the ability to access it wherever you have internet service. Uh, as I said before, you don't have to lug around your heavy coding books. You have it all in a web-based format. There is access within SuperCoder to extensive content, including the coding alert newsletters that I showed you before, and of course the opportunity to earn AAPC CEUs uh, in a variety of ways through SuperCoder. Final thoughts, I'm just going to go ahead and check and see if we have any questions that have popped up. Looks like there aren't any questions, 
but if you do have questions that you're just not comfortable asking in this session, please do feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can go to supercoder.com for a free trial. My contact information is on the screen. Please don't hesitate to reach out with me to me with any questions you may have, or if you would like uh, a more comprehensive demo or a demo of some other tools that you saw while we were looking at uh, the, the EM tools today. You will also receive a recording of this presentation in your email in about an hour, probably after the session ends, uh, so that if you had anything that uh, maybe you missed or you wanted to go back and take another look at, you would be able to do that as well. Um, so you'll also have my contact information in there also. So I thank you so much for spending uh, this time with me this morning. I hope I was able to uh, show you some new things and that you will soon join our SuperCoder family, and I look forward to speaking with you at a later date. Thank you so much, and have a great day.